Yeah, let's uh, get started on uh, my session uh, for hardware-friendly V host VDPA. Uh, this talk is a continuation of a discussion that we had with the vendors for VDPAs, uh, particularly in uh, the meeting that uh, there's some feedback from the hardware vendors uh, to propose some you know, more advanced uh, APIs for device model as well as the UAPI. So uh, first I'm going to look at the problems and uh, with the current implementation, that's the software-based shadow work queue implementation. And uh, I'm going to propose some new APIs additions to uh, try to restore the device state, which is uh, device neural and also future compatible. And I'm, uh, I'm also going to present a, a way to actually uh, to, to resume the device and also to how to get it recovered and which requires some uh, PCI, uh, PCI uh, transport specification requirements as well as the amendment. And the last I will try to uh, come up with uh, an update to the device model so hopefully it can um, benefit for any future endeavor just uh, trying to migrate between uh, hardware VDP device and also QMU software device. Um, I think uh, for most pe people here, uh, it's already uh, very familiar with uh, the word I.O., uh, but with VDPA, it's actually a, a hardware acceleration uh, for word I.O. Basically, it's a hardware implementation. Uh, the idea for um, VDPA is that uh, we already pass through the data pass, um, but we don't actually uh, pass through the control. Um, so that we can enjoy the benefit of hardware, so we can offload hardware. And the, the good benefit for VTPA is that uh, you can have a very, um, very good way for live migration to implement because uh, uh, it has the, 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 you know, the good, the, uh, for one, one thing it has good performance, for the other thing that it can just leverage the, uh, um, whatever uh, solver uh, that in the in the gas, uh, the virtual uh, driver, so, so it's very common. Uh, the shared work queue is the way to uh, implement the line migration for VTPA using solver-based solution. Uh, it has no dependency on the hardware, uh, so because it just try to reuse the existing interfaces, uh, that is uh, that is common between the. Uh, uh, software implementation for devices and also the hardware of VDPA. And the idea is uh, just uh, uh, just come from the DPTK uh, implementation, uh, which used to uh, intercept, uh, just uh, intercept the use ring access, uh, which uh, involved the page write access. And the original idea uh, was just to use to intercept the use, use ring, but uh, in the actual invitation for shadow queue, it also uh, you know, interject the, uh, the, the doorbell key case with the interrupt so that you can have a full uh, mediation to get, uh, let's say, the emulation for, and also doing translation between different uh, re, uh, layout of the rings, so, such that like uh, in the legacy device, uh, if we want to uh, support legacy device on top of a modern uh, with a device, it's still possible. And the uh, shared work queue uh, for migration uh, is work in the way that uh, you can see in the left-hand side uh, is the normal case that without uh, line migration. And the right-hand side is the case that with line migration get started, uh, the shared work queue is, is just uh, had to switch between the uh, pass-through mode to the uh, mediation mode, and the shadow queue just sit in the middle between the uh, devices and the guests and try to translate all of the data pass uh, requests and also relay uh, those um, those feedback uh, those uh, response back to, uh, to the guest. Uh, as we uh, just mentioned, uh, there's 
because of uh, the current interface uh, for Red I/O is software based, there's a lot of uh, you know implications there. Uh, for example, uh, there's no resume support on the Word I/O level, and all of the restoration of the state need to go with device reset and also uh, try to you know reload the state uh, from some uh, migration string and also replay the control queue messages. And uh, as an example uh, here that, uh, that I want to demonstrate is that, so basically uh, for the network device, uh, if we want to, uh, you know, apply those, you know, control queue messages, uh, it need to have a full functional uh, control queue. And that has the dependency on the uh, driver OK and also the uh, queue enable status. And the queue enable status, uh, once, uh, once it's, uh, the data bus is set up, it means that um, the, the queue is already uh, full running. So that will run in uh, conflict uh, if you have some other, uh, other requests in parallel. So which is not a very uh, typical, but uh, it kind of works for networking device, but uh, maybe it's not um, a good way to uh, restore the device state through this kind of, you know, uh, interface. So uh, that's one of the limitations because uh, the, the spec has no uh, resume support. But on the other side, uh, they add, uh, the uh, suspense support uh, has been added to VDPA as a new API, which is uh, kind of out, of out of spec, but I think there's some uh, ongoing work to add a support for that to the virtual spec as well, uh, which is through the uh, device stop interface. So that would be a good part for uh, starting the work uh, to think about uh, whether we have a more efficient way to implement the, the other part uh, for the resume. So uh, basically, uh, for this kind of you know, uh, sequences, uh, we can see that uh, it's not very efficient to implement the uh, data pass in enablement. Uh, in particular, uh, in particular uh, that we see this problem uh, with uh, NVIDIA device because they have a different uh, invitation rather than uh, VDIO uh, in the uh, VDPA itself because uh, it's supposed to be, you know, vendor specific. Uh, it has to, you know, apply some trick to actually work around the, the issue in their, their, their hardware limitation. So it's uh, kind of also out of spec and uh, it kind of works, uh, but it's not ideal. Yeah, that maybe, you know, the same slide uh, just illustrate the problem I just had, had before. And also, the other requirement comes from um, light update for QMU. So this, uh, we have very committed, um, you know, we have a very committed use case for uh, QMU live update and the work from our company, Oracle, is uh, ongoing for this project. And we want to have the things that we want to have very efficient way to light, my, uh, light update the QMU. And the core us is that uh, we really want a subsequent uh, latency. And because of the hardware limitation, uh, it's not probably very easy to you know, implement uh, a very efficient way to achieve this goal because of the uh, a, a lot of cycles you can see that to apply those uh, control queue messages. If it has a lot of queues, uh, you have to you know do it a lot of times, right? So uh, another thing for the live update is that uh, because uh, it has a different mode, uh, one being the execute mode, uh, the ask mode. Uh, it's actually, uh, you don't need to reboot the kernel. Uh, you just update the QMU. The kernel, uh, the device that is saved in the kernel is, state, uh, is still there, but uh, you just have to, uh, you know, restore the source state in the QMU. But uh, with the reboot mode, um, you have no way to, you know, you have to resort to the uh, reset and then, and then reply all of the control queue messages. So we really want to, uh, to see uh, the resume interface to be applicable to this, you know, uh, reboot mode. So we don't have to go with the full cycle. 
uh, another burden is come from uh, the device model today because today's uh, virtual device model is totally uh, software based and the network, um, the VTV device is, uh, is not uh, directly exposed but rather a, a device backend uh, for what I owe. And the, because of this uh, deviation of uh, hardware and software, it's actually uh, uh, the migration a stream for uh, what I owe is actually ruled by the um, QMU's specific implementation of the software, but not ruled by the virtual spec. So if we uh, want to have uh, build a pure hardware uh, device for, uh, for VDPA, uh, we really need to define some self-contained uh, VN state, uh, excluding all of the uh, software state. So, but this is not defined by the, stack, uh, by the spec. So we are going to see whether there, there's a way uh, that we can abstract uh, this interface uh, for, for hardware devices so that maybe it's possible in the future to migrate between different device models. Okay, so here uh, we come up with the ideas of how to do, do that. So basically, um, we need to separate out those, those uh, device state. Uh, it uh, can be a device level device state and also work queue level uh, device state and also feature based uh, state. So these uh, working sequence like, uh, is like this. So in the, um, basically uh, we want to uh, add an, another API for resume uh, that's back uh, by a backend feature, uh, resume, uh, backend F resume. And also you require the input for the migration stream. Uh, so that will be, uh, that will save uh, during the suspension time. So that will back by another backend feature. So that, uh, this is a, a working sequence. So you can see that uh, it'll try to get size during span and also save it somewhere. And uh, on the destination, it will just uh, put a uh, device into the suspense state and also load it all of the states from there. Yeah, this is the, uh, the type for this, you know, different uh, device state and uh, I can share some example here. So how to, uh, so basically uh, the idea is very straightforward. Uh, we just put some uh, TLV, uh, tight lens uh, value headers uh, on top of uh, the device state so that uh, when it comes to parse the state, uh, so let's say uh, if the migration uh, destination, they want to parse it, they can just uh, pick uh, the, the header without having to, uh, you know, to know what is, uh, yeah, uh, what is the lens, and 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 it doesn't have to, you know, uh, go with a specific order to pass this uh, state. And other uh, good part is that uh, it's compose, comp uh, completely independent and composable. And so this uh, uh, state can can be optional, uh, and it's not uh, required to have a fixed state, and but rather you can have. Uh, Arrival uh, lens of the uh, for the for this device state in the in the migration stream. So this is a device level. Uh, this is an example for device level uh, states uh, states uh, for the block storage, uh, block storage device, and it can have uh, its custom device state for for in flight data. And also uh, this work queue uh, is very similar to the concept of the existing uh, uh, field in the migration stream. And config space uh, is pretty straightforward. Uh, we can just uh, duplicate those uh, you know, config structures in the config state. And there's also some guest invisible config state uh, which is not uh, present in the uh, config space. Uh, we can, you know, uh, you know, uh, it's actually uh, configured through the control bar queue uh, messages. So we can decode this, you know, control queue messages as uh, the, the type of the uh, state, uh, including the, not only the, the feature, but also the class and also the command. So make it a sub feature so it's more compatible with the way that, uh, let's say some of the hardware vendors might just uh, only implement one or only, only a few of, uh, of the, those device state uh, of those uh, control messages, 
So we can have a sub-feature level of um, uh, way to, uh, of identification. Yeah, these are examples. Uh, so how to represent this uh, with the MAC table and as well VLAN table that you can see. Okay, when uh, we have this uh, kind of UAPI and also the uh, data structures defined for this uh, saving device state, we can also present this on uh, the PCI transport so that uh, it is uh, more self-contained in the uh, spec level and also it will benefit uh, for the uh, nested guest. Uh, yeah, and also it's, um, it's possible to extend this to other transports such as uh, admin queue or transport over queue depending on the need. Backward compatibility. So we know that uh, because to work with the software uh, with I.O., uh, we had to uh, implement this uh, new interface for, uh, for migration state but we had to be compatible with, uh, compatible with the older uh, software implement, uh, implementation. In that sense, uh, that uh, we can easily, uh, so for any uh, migration site that uh, has older and uh, QMU running, we can just do some uh, translation work to make it uh, uh, match with the, the existing uh, migration state uh, in QMU software implementation. And uh, the new QML can finally, uh, you know, just translate, uh, just transfer the the real uh, or more efficient uh, device state blob as it is in the migration stream. And we would also need to take care of uh, forward compatibility between different VDP versions. So basically, the idea is that uh, new versions will be able to recognize the old version uh, with a kind of a shorter uh, lens. Uh, but uh, if we comes to the old version, I uh, don't, uh, don't uh, understand some of the uh, lower lens of the, the, the type, it will just fa fail to resume uh, for that specific request. So the base assumption is that the, the admin user has to match this based on uh, the features that we find in the device, uh, device state. So if they find a match, so they probably have no uh, circumstances that uh, we can actually get it uh, incompatible or uh, get uh, you know, errors in uh, migration. Okay, at last, uh, we, I try to summarize uh, all of the benefits here for both um, shared work queue and also our resume API. So basically, uh, the good part for the shared work queue is that it works with the existing spec and it doesn't have a uh, need to implement all of those uh, uh, stuff uh, with the translation for uh, between the old API and new API. So uh, I think uh, that's practically a very good uh, benefit. And the other benefit is that uh, it has a good way to uh, translate a different ring, la uh, ring layout. So, but the downside is that uh, probably is has involved to uh, involve some CPU usage but on the uh, migration time, it will have some slight impact on the performance. Um, the good part for the uh, resumable uh, VTP uh, can well address that because it has no uh, overhead because it's just uh, working in the through, uh, pass through mode. Uh, then I need to mediate uh, those ring access. And together with the dirty checking, with uh, device assistant dirty checking, it can actually uh, live without any uh, software based uh, mechanism. But uh, the other part is that we need to, uh, really need to listen to uh, vendors' uh, feedback on this part, whether it's applicable for them to implement the interface and also uh, it's the, uh, the current interface is very never specific. I, I guess, yeah, probably uh, I would like to see more devices uh, or more vendors uh, to express their need or their uh, they kind of, you know, uh, because I think uh, for resume, it's very easy for them to, it's not a, a, a new concept, but the thing is that uh, for those device state, it might be not easy for them to, uh, for them to implement. Yeah, that's what I have for today. Yeah, any questions? Hi, Michael. So, uh, 
Oh, great. So, uh, it's, you're building a, a rich interface mm -hmm. for VTPA to support migration, and there's now some effort on Virtio side to add uh, migration there. I wonder whether you think it's reasonable to kind of share the, 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 the structures used for that? Yeah, uh, okay. The question was uh, whether it's possible to share uh, the same st uh, structure between SoWebVirtio and VTPA, right? Okay, I think uh, that's doable, yeah, but uh, I think that the, 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 the difficult part is that uh, the QAML specific uh, implementation, uh, currently uh, it had to live with those, you know, uh, microchain uh, data, uh, which is software based, but I kind of, you know, think there, there, there might be ways out to actually make it optional, and such that uh, when we come to uh, migrate uh, between different device models, we just need to, you know, uh, come with some new, uh, new flags stating that, okay, I just want to be more compatible with uh, the hardware, so I just care about those, um, what, what else back, uh, back uh, uh, the standard uh, device state rather than those uh, software state. Uh, that's one way that I can think of. And the other way is uh, possibly uh, we can gradually uh, migrate our uh, you know, software-based model towards uh, hardware model, um, or we can sort of you know, introduce uh, new options to enable um, the, the, so the model is like uh, the, uh, the, the device itself is still software-based, but it has a, a hardware backend. Uh, it's a kind of uh, VTP uh, backend. Uh, so we gradually uh, try to move the mo uh, device model to a new API with that uh, uh, microchain string. So, uh, and it kind of have, uh, have some coupling uh, so that uh, you can just mic to the newer uh, uh, QMU. And then after that, uh, probably you can just switch to the, the new mode to only be compatible with uh, hardware VTPA. So uh, that's another thing that I'm, I, I don't, you know, uh, go into the full details uh, for whether that's applicable, but uh, that's two of uh, ways that I can think of. Yeah, hi. You mentioned you were interested in a hardware vendor's feedback. Have you spoken to any of the uh, vendors yet about, about this and whether it's a good fit for them? Uh, well, yeah, that, that's, that, that was a good question. Yeah, the question was uh, whether we uh, talk to any uh, device vendors for, the, uh, for, for, for any feedback, right? So uh, currently we partnership with uh, NVIDIA for their devices and, and we also have a regular meeting with other vendors like uh, Intel and also Xilinx. And they also uh, provide very good uh, feedbacks uh, during the meeting. I guess um, the thing um, is that uh, Currently, uh, I don't see very, uh, uh, so currently the problem is uh, uh, shadow work queue is uh, work, maybe work uh, sufficient enough yeah, to get a very decent uh, performance. So uh, I'm not sure practically we need to use this uh, big hammer to enhance the, the spec and because that, that will go into actually take a very long cycle to get it you know, into the spec. So, Maybe the plan is, uh, the more feasible plan is that uh, we come up with the uh, API first, which uh, VTP only, and then uh, we sum all of the feedback from the vendors and maybe uh, start, get started, uh, only uh, implement this uh, interface for only a few uh, device types, such as uh, storage and, and network device. And then we can see yeah, whether this is in, uh, applicable to other uh, devices like crypto or other device system devices because they are, have more implications on that part. So, yeah, that's something that, yeah, that's a very good question. Hi. Um, in, in the past, the Virdio community has, has kind of tried to avoid the byte stream mm -hmm. migration approach where a Virdio device can just serialize anything mm -hmm. and instead has tried to um, have APIs that fetch high-level, Virdio-level data Mm -hmm. like the available win index and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, this approach is basically like VFIO live migration, where you 
Oh, yeah. Have any bytes to it. If you consider just exposing APIs to get the state instead of saying you have to serialize and deserialize byte streams. Mm, yeah, that was a very good question. So basically, uh, the question was uh, whether there's uh, a way to actually not avoid uh, serializing or deserializing the device state uh, of the uh, migration string. Uh, yeah, I think there was some proposal from uh, NVIDIA that they want to propose the uh, admin queue to do that. Um, well, um, yeah, I think the, the, the first obstacle is that um, right here we have the software uh, device model, right? So we have to live with the uh, migration string. Uh, so it means that we still have to, you know, make it compatible uh, between this uh, new API and the old migration string. So that's why, um, to be practical, I think uh, we need to get started from there. Uh, but I think if we come with a new model, so maybe some generic hardware device um, for EDPA, we can go uh, with that way. Yeah, maybe not just uh, depend on the, the deserialization, but depend on some new uh, layout for the migration string, probably, yeah. That's, that's doable, yeah, but uh, the real challenge is that, or, or is there any, any use case for that? So, because uh, we saw where, uh, where uh, we have a lot of benefits, such as uh, fallback to the user space, um, but I'm not sure, so current, the, 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 um, whether there are any, any use case for, for hardware-only uh, device. So, yeah, that was my answer. Any more questions? This one? This one? What, the last one? Oh, oh, I see what you mean. Uh, well, yeah. Actually, the CPU usage is uh, the CPU that uh, cost that uh, uh, get otherwise in introduced by some other component which is not related to the uh, normal mode. Like say, if you have uh, vocal running uh, that without line migration, you get get uh, X percent of the CPU on the whole side. But if you kick uh, kicks in the uh, line migration and the CPU increased to uh, Y percent, so that will actually give you the evidence so the CPU usage will be increased. So uh, I think uh, the DP DPDK implementation, they mentioned their uh, CPU usage uh, uh, bumps up to 40% 40, 40 uh, in the peak time. So they depend on the workload that you have. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, that's very good. Yeah, that's, that's a very good point. So basically, uh, uh, I think the, the background uh, here was uh, we ever asked uh, whether there's a way to improve the shadow queue performance uh, because uh, we care about the 
basically we care about the uh, latency and as well as the PPS performance, you know, uh, because uh, it kind of, you know, uh, I think uh, it's, uh, the zero copy uh, has no way to, or, uh, or I think it's, uh, the, 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 the impact is very limited to the throughput, right? But uh, mostly uh, I think the latency and the cost for, you know, you, you have to translate between this and mediate uh, between, right? So the cost is, in, as some, for some workload is not neglectable. So I think, yeah, that's uh, somewhat concerned and need to be, you know, benchmarked uh, with, uh, and backed up by, by some data. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, okay, yeah, that's good. Yeah, probably we can just uh, put it offline because I think, yeah, it's already, you know, run out of time. Yeah, all right, thank you for today's session and enjoy the rest of the session for today, yeah.